guys, I'm James Raphael and I'm a Warrior Addict brand warrior. And this is a longer video, over 30 minutes, specifically looking at a yoga flow sequence for triathletes. So when you're working with those specific disciplines, there's areas of the body that get overworked. Quite typically from the running and the cycling, that's through the quads, the hip flexors, sometimes even into the knees but also in swimming, also in the shoulders, and uh, finding a little bit of rotation in the upper spine can be really helpful uh, if you're a triathlete. So the flow will focus on really working to create space and balance in those areas to both help balance the body, but also to improve your game. So we're gonna start on the hands and knees. It would be really helpful before we begin to grab the following three props. So we might have a foam block, a yoga brick, and a strap. And now, I'm being realistic, if you don't have any of these items, don't worry, there's different things we can do, but you might have at least a towel. A towel can be used in place of the strap, but also we can use the towel to pad up the knee instead of using the foam block. So, take your towel or your props, if you're lucky enough to have them, to one side. And let's come to the hands and knees. So we're going to start on the hands and knees position and slowly warm up the spine. Your hands are below your shoulders. Spread your fingers wide and root the thumbs down. And now turn the tops of the feet down. So as you press the feet down gently, you get a bit of an ankle stretch as well. Inhaling to begin. The spine lengthens. The back begins to arch. And as you breathe out, curling the other way. Inhaling forwards. And exhaling back. Take this a few more times. And just exploring the range of your spine. When your breath's in, imagine the collarbones are going wide and the shoulders are away from the ears. On your breaths out, press the floor away and feel the shoulders lift away from the floor. Scoop the belly in. So it's really key for triathletes to find mobility in the spine, particularly with swimming. Once the, the spine and the muscles of the back become more mobile and strong through a wider range of motion, you have more control, more efficiency as you move. From here, come back to centre. Take your hands forwards a little bit and tuck your toes. We're going to slide the left foot back. Now, as you press down into the hands, reach the left heel further away from you. It's going to lengthen the back of the leg and get into the back of the knee, which can sometimes get tight, especially if you're on the bike or if you're running a lot. Spend a few breaths here. Now, begin to swivel your heel in and down so you can root the whole of the foot. Take a spin on your right knee and bring the foot slightly behind you. Come into a side plank. Weight is in the right hand. Press into the floor. Lift the left hand up. You open across the front of the chest. As you do that, gently bring the hips forwards so you also start to open through the front of the pelvis, the muscles at the front of the thigh and the hip. We're going to circle the top arm back a few times, take it behind you, and then forwards and up. Three big windmills. So we strengthen one shoulder and mobilise the other. This time the hand comes back, take it behind you and cross the arm behind the lower back. If you have a bit more room, you could turn your chest slightly upwards and you'll feel the chest and the front of the right shoulder lengthening. Slowly come back round, 
back to the starting position, tuck your toes. Right foot slides back, press the heel away. Root into your hands and really begin to find length through the back of the leg. We're all different. Some of us will feel this more in the hamstring, some more in the calf, some in the ligaments and tendons in the knee, the back of the knee. Breathing deeply wherever you feel a stretch. From here, turn the heel down, and we'll take a little pivot. Left foot comes out, right hand coming up, arms wide, almost like you're drawing a bow. Bring the arms really wide, and then press down into the left hand so the shoulder is a little active and stable. From the chest, spread, hips forward slightly. And circle the arm back. And take it forwards. And twice more. Articulate the shoulder joint through the circular movement. This time the arm crosses behind the lower back. And you might even roll the shoulder and the chest up slightly, finding a twist. If the neck feels stiff here, give it a tiny bit of movement. See if you could relax it. From here, slowly coming back round to the hands and the knees. From here, bring your big toes together and press the tops of the feet down. Slowly coming back into a child's pose, breathing here. And this is going to be an active child's pose, so rather than relaxing the elbows down, in this one, could you press into the hands or even the fingertips and send your hips back, sending your hips down towards your heels. Don't worry if they don't touch, just pressing back. Feel the shoulders open, spine long. And the muscle around uh, the top of the knee also stretching and opening a little. From here, we're going to inhale forwards and round the back as you do this. And then as you exhale, wiggle your knees back slightly and we're going to lower all the way down. Lower the pelvis down first, then the ribs, then the chest. Inhale to a cobra, lift through the back of the neck. Start to bring a bit of movement into the upper back. Big toes touch as you exhale, child's pose. Inhale, ripple forwards, wave like. Exhale, lower the hips, the ribs, the chest. Inhale, cobra. Twice more with this wave-like motion. But simultaneously opens and stretches the back of the body and the front of the body. And we exhale to come back to child's pose. Last time, rippling forwards. See if you can find that wave-like quality to the body. This time as you come back, tuck your toes, we're finding downward dog. Lift your hips and slowly come up. And don't worry about the perfect down dog for now. Find the general shape. Give everything a little bit of a wiggle. Maybe rotate the wrists. Tread water with the legs. Find a bit of movement. And start to stabilise your down dog. As always, if your shoulders are tight, turn your hands out slightly to create a bit more space. Soften your knees, set the hips up. From here, we're going to inhale into a plank position. Find length in your plank by sliding your feet back slightly. From here, we're going to turn onto the outside edge of the right foot coming into a side plank. Let's find a little bit of warmth and work. Left arm lifts up. To make this more challenging, we're going to sweep the arm back and take it forwards. So we learn to move the arms whilst keeping strength in the torso and the core. It's not so easy. 
can be a really helpful movement to master in the body. Hand comes down, second side, swivel over, side plank on the left. Arms spread wide, keep the hips lifted, and then let's circle the arm three times. Learning to stabilize one shoulder whilst we mobilize the other. Going back to center. From here, lower the knees, lower all the way down. Inhale, lift up into a cobra. Exhale, back into a downward dog. This time, inhale, lift your right leg up behind you. And really reach the leg away. And then, now, could you bend the right knee and start to stack the right hip on top of the left so you open the hip. This is sometimes called lamppost dog, you might imagine why. Kind of cocking one leg up and opening the hip. The knee goes higher eventually. And then now as you exhale, bring the knee forwards, step the foot down, drop the back knee. You could use your hand to bring your foot forwards you might pad your back knee up with a towel. Coming into a kneeling position. From here, inhale, lift the hands up. And then exhale, bring them down and around. We'll do that again, inhale, lifting up. Exhale, circle them back and around, feel the chest opening. One more time, this time bring the palms together. You might take the palms behind the neck. Draw the shoulders in and up, breathing here. Keep lifting through the front of the body. One more breath, and then release your hands down. From here, lift your right hand up into a twist. Optionally, you might lift your back knee up and really press your left thigh up towards the ceiling if you do that. So the back of your leg is really long. One big circle with the arm, variation on a theme, <laughs> and then take the hand down. We're going to step back into a plank position, first chaturanga. In your chaturanga, elbows in, lower down slowly, hover, the feet flip over as you breathe in, press up, lift the upper spine, push the floor away. Downward facing dog, flip the feet. Root the hand. Next inhale, left leg's coming up. Pause and breathe here. See if the pelvis could be level to begin with as you lengthen the leg behind you. From here, begin to bend the knee. Start to stack the left hip on top of the right, open to the side, lamppost dock. Really root into the hands so you can lift your, your her left knee up you feel like opening through the front of the pelvis, the hip, the groin. And then exhale, we're going to step forwards, drop your back knee. Kneeling position, coming up. Inhale, scoop the arms up. Exhale, circle them back. Twice more. And taking the palms together, take that behind the neck. Bring the elbows in and up. You feel your chest lift, the area of the heart rise up, back of the neck long. Your next exhale, hands come down. The left hand will lift into that twist. Option to lift the back knee. Rather than having the knee low and shaky, because you really lengthen the back leg, press the thigh up. Circling back and forwards. And now the hands come down, stepping back, plank. Take your vinyasa sequence, chaturanga, cobra or upward dog, downward facing dog. Take five breaths here. The fingers spread, the toes spread. Lift your sitting bones up, lengthen the spine. 
Eventually you might start to lengthen the legs as well. But check in if that causes your back to round, pause, rebend, then re lengthen the spine. It's more helpful to have the spine long and the shoulders open than the legs straight. On your next inhale, the right leg lifts up. And then exhaling, stepping forwards, back knee comes down. Inhale, lift the hands up, breathe here. This time we're going to lift through the front of the pelvis. So the two bony parts at the front of the hip, the aces points, they're going to draw up gently and the lower ribs come in slightly. This action of lifting up and in might help to lengthen through the left hip flexors and psoas muscle. And you can keep that lift, that action, even as you lower forwards and down, so you start to really find depth now. Think about lengthening out of the lower back and lifting through the pubic bone. Option to bring the palms together and take that behind the head for two breaths. And then exhale, hands come down. Same as before, right hand lifts up, back knee lifts up. This time a little variation. Turn your right foot out to the side and roll onto the outside edge of your left foot. Take a moment here, feeling the hip opening. And then now, slide your foot back, five side plank. Hand comes down, chaturanga. Cobra or up dog. Downward facing dog. Straight through the left leg lift. Exhale, gently stepping forwards, back knee down. Find that rise from the floor of the pelvis. Lifting up, ribs come gently inwards. And you might lower forwards and down. Palms may come together and come behind the head for two breaths. Turn the hands, find that twist, back leg comes up, arms away. From here, turn your left toes out and turn onto the outside edge of the right foot. Slide the foot back, side plank, tricky transition, and then flip yourself over, chaturanga, coming down. Long spine as you lift the chest, exhale, downward facing dog. Five breaths here. If you'd like to build a little bit of extra fire and strength, you could take Turbo Dog for a few breaths. If you've never heard of that pose before, what will happen is you will lower your elbows in your down dog and they'll hover a few inches above the mat. You'll then squeeze the elbows in, you'll find you get a bit of a shake on, and it's pretty hard work. Just a couple more breaths here. So building strength and power in your shoulders, and then slowly come back up. From here, right leg lifts up, big step forwards, back knee down. At this point, it could be really helpful to grab your block or a towel. Take that to pad your left knee up. We're going to come kneeling position once again. As you come kneeling, find a tall spine. Same as before, lift up, ribs in, lower down. This time with a bit of an extra movement, you might reach back, bend your knee and catch the foot. Bring the heel in towards the glutes. As the heel comes in, keep lifting through the pubic bone. So if I don't do that, it's going to look like this, and I'm going to dump into my lower back, and I actually lose the stretch as well. So instead, I'm going to lift up and gently bring my ribs in, and it's so much deeper through the front of the left thigh. If you have lots of room, you can bring your right elbow down. If 
you have loads of room, you could bring your right hand down to the floor and keep bringing the heel in. But if you do that, still keep lifting up through the front of the pelvis or you'll lose the stretch. Two more breaths here. And slowly release. Tuck your back toes. Walk your hands on the inside of your front leg. We're going to start to sit back towards the heel into a forward fold. You could bring your hands closer in to support you, or you might start to lower all the way down into a deeper forward fold inside the leg here. Another three deep breaths. Your right toes are curling back, they're flexed. And then slowly coming forwards. Keep your hands down on the inside of that front foot. If it's difficult, you could be on the fingertips. If it's easy, lift the back knee and tuck the toes, low lunge. And you might rock forwards and back a little bit here, opening into the hip and then stabilize. Once again, the back leg is strong and long. Spine long, heart reaching forwards. If you have really open hips at this point, you could even come down onto the elbows. But if that takes you off balance and feels terrible, you're not gonna get any benefit from it. So keep the hands down and lengthen. So it's still super deep, right? Back leg stays strong. and then lower the back knee. From here, take your hands around that front foot, and we're going to step back, down facing dog. You might stay in down dog, or you might take a vinyasa here. Once you find your down dog once more, inhale, lift the left leg. Exhale, step it forwards, back knee comes down. Pad up your back knee, kneeling position again. Sitting tall, lifting up the front of the pelvis, lower ribs come in. From here, begin to lower forwards and down. You might even catch the back foot and draw the heel in. If you've watched some of my other videos, you know that I do this quite a lot, this sequence, because it's so helpful, particularly if you do other physical work, other sports, or gym work. So we don't often get deep into the quads in the front of the hip flexors in terms of a stretch. Even yoga tends to, over preference, stretching the back of the leg more than the top of the thigh. So we're rebalancing here. Pubic bone comes up, heel comes in. Maybe you lower down, maybe you're all the way down here. Find a position which works for you today, and that's different on every day, right? Just because we don't do the deep, deep variation today doesn't mean we won't do it tomorrow or another day in the future. A couple more breaths here, keep the heel coming in. And then slowly release, tuck the toes, coming all the way back, hands come inside the front leg, lengthening, support yourself with your hands if you need to, or fold all the way down inside the thigh. Either way, your spine is long, and the front of the body is quite spacious, it's quite long as well. One more full breath here. And then coming forwards. Take your fingertips down and work here, or take your palms down. Option to lift the back knee and straighten the leg. If you're there, you might take a little bit of a wiggle forwards and back. Cradling the hip as you move. Stabilize, find length and space, long spine. Imagine your heel at the top of your head are moving away from each other. You 
might even come down to the elbows if you have the room and the space. Another two breaths. And then take your hands around the foot, step back, downward facing dog. You might take a vinyasa. So you might take your chaturanga, your cobra or up dog, and you'll meet in downward dog. From here, make sure your props are out of the way, because we're going to lower the knees and come all the way down to lie down. Take a moment to take the backs of the hands down to the mat, alongside the chest, to stretch out the wrists just a little bit. Not so much weight in there, just bringing the wrists into a little bit of space. And then reset hands by shoulders. We're going to come into a few back bends, strengtheners, and shoulder strengtheners. From here, lift your right leg and reach it a bit further away. Like you get a bit longer. And then your hands stay by your shoulders. Inhale, lift the back of the neck, lift the chest, long spine. Shoulders away from the ears. And root your thighs and your pelvis downwards. So you press the pubic bone down into the mat gently. Carefully negotiating as you do that. Which helps you come onto the lower ribs a little bit and you find that lift. If this is easy, begin to float the hands and take the hands behind you. Reach the fingers away from you, palms face inwards, half locust. The legs are still active, rooting. The chest lifts, but the neck is long and free. One more deep breath and release down. You might rest your head on your hand for a couple of breaths. And you might wiggle out the hips. We're going to come back in. So, arms alongside the body. Root the pelvis down. Begin to lift up. Arms go long. This time we're going to work the feet as well. Begin to lift the legs. Spread the balls of the foot. And press them away. Five deep breaths here. Imagine your spine getting longer as you lift up, draw the shoulders back, the chest opens, the back gets stronger, one more deep breath here, and as you exhale, slowly release, turn the head to one side, take a little rest. So we're going to come back into that pose again, or an optional variation this time. If you're joining me for the variation, it's going to be bow pose. In bow, the knees bend and you catch the ankles or the sides of the feet. Check your knees are about hip distance apart as you find your grip. Once you're in place, start to root the pubic bone down, the pelvis roots down, almost like you're pressing down into the mouth with the pelvis, and then flex your toes. As you flex your toes, begin to press your feet back and that lifts the chest and the shoulders draw back. Keep the feet reaching back, keep the chest lifting. See if the neck could be free. It's long rather than curled back. Breathe deeply. Feel the thighs lift up, find a little height. and then slowly release, oh, take a rest, give the legs a little bit of a shake out, and then very slowly hands underneath the shoulders, coming all the way up to the hands and knees. For a moment give the spine a little bit of movement, a bit of a wiggle side to side, and then slowly come round. So we're going to come to sit 
And I highly recommend sitting on one of these because it actually helps you get deeper in the poses. If you don't have one of these, you can take a towel or a blanket and fold it a couple of times so you have a bit of a lift. Position your block or your towel and come to sit on it. We'll stretch the legs out long to begin and find your strap. From here, begin to bend the right knee in and then allow the hip to open. So one leg is straight and one leg is a little open. Now, as you can see, I'm doing, I was a little bit unbalanced then on the block, I was kind of falling off. So I want to make sure my sitting bone is really rooted down onto the block that I feel stable. If this is uncomfortable to have the leg hanging like this, you can prop it up with a block or a towel or um, a cushion. Left leg is straight, find your strap, and lasso the front foot. Now before you go any further, drop the strap for a moment. It's really hard to come into forward fold if the pelvis is tilted and we're sinking back like this, I'm exaggerating. If you imagine, here's the front of my hips, if I allow that to move back, it's really hard to fold forwards and get a long spine, and actually I lose all the stretch in my hamstring because my sitting bones have just gone under and forwards, so actually the muscle is getting shorter. What I instead want to do is I want to think about bringing the front of my hips forwards and down, almost like I could tilt my pelvis, tailbone goes out and back, and as I do that I'm going to press my left thigh down, so pelvis tilts forwards, left thigh goes down. That gives you more room to come forwards. Now grab your strap. Hold on to the strap, relax the shoulders, and keep the chest open. As you inhale, lengthen, and think about taking your heart towards your toes. Pause, and then check your shoulders. If they've rounded in, you find yourself hunching. Could you come up a sec? Draw the shoulders back and away from the ears, and then come down, keep the spine long, keep the torso long. Forward fold. You might take more of the strap. If you have a lot of uh, range, you might even take the hands to the foot and fold all the way down. But again, it's more effective, you're getting more of the benefit of the pose if the spine is long and you're lengthening forwards than if you're crunching down. So keep length as your priority. One more breath. And then slowly coming back. Now keep everything exactly as it is, but this time bring the knee back into centre. And we're going to step the foot across. So the foot steps across the left leg and it comes to the outside edge. Now, you might continue to work here and already feel a stretch in the outside of the right hip. If you have a bit more space, you're going to bring your right heel all the way over and cross the thighs. Eventually, your knees are coming almost on top of each other, a bit of careful negotiation around the groin, and you'll be here with the top leg bent and the knees almost above each other. If you're in this version of the pose, again, you can still take your hands forwards and fold over the legs. And it can be really quite deep, so go slowly. You might feel this in the back of the left knee or the calf. You might feel it in the outside of the right hip. Keep the breath slow and deep, each breath out like you're relaxing into new space. Just two more breaths. And then slowly coming up. So we're going to take all that to the second side. Legs go straight, 
left knee comes in and then opens. You could prop up the leg if you need to. Find your strap. Then again, tilt the pelvis forwards, bring the front of the hips forwards and down. Send your right thigh down towards the mat. Lift the chest, relax the shoulders. Begin to fold forwards long through the spine and the front of the body. Take up any slack that you need. You could work here, or you could catch the foot and fold down. Catching the foot doesn't necessarily mean that it's better or that the pose is deeper. You could quite easily catch the foot and bend the knee around and you lose the stretch. So thinking about how you can optimise here, the leg is straight, the spine is long. Feel the shoulders hunching, separate them, widen the collarbones, shoulders down away from the ears. Slowly releasing. Close the left hip and step the foot over. Same as before, option one you can work here hold onto the shin, lift up and draw yourself in. That gives you a very similar stretch, but not quite as extreme. If you do have more room, take your foot outside the right hip and stack your knees almost on top of each other. You can cross the legs over. From here, lengthen and slowly begin to fold coming down. Notice if your right leg wants to roll out like this, that makes it much easier and you lose some of the stretch. So instead, make sure your big toe is pointing right up. And you'll feel it as soon as you access that. <laughs> Unloading gently. And check the jaw, the shoulders aren't gripping too much. Inviting a sense of release through the pose. Being able to release and relax the muscles in the body at will is a real skill and an art form. It takes time. When we do that, we can move out of states of stress and tension much more freely. And it's particularly useful if you are someone like a triathlete whose muscles are very active very often. They can often get overactive and grip all the time. So it's helpful to learn how to ungrip and give them a bit of space and nourishment. Let's come out. From here, take your props off to the side. We're going to come all the way to lie down. So one last thing before we rest in Shavasana, I'm going to invite you to take a bridge pose. Bring your feet hip distance apart and a little closer in towards the bum. From here, take your hands down. As you breathe in, lift the hips up and lift the heart up actually. You could be here or you could link the fingers beneath you and wiggle onto the outer edges of the shoulders so you find a bit more space to rise up. Think of this as lengthening and opening the front of the body all the way from your knees to the top of the chest rather than a back bend. Think of it as lengthening the front of the body. Two more breaths. And then slowly coming out. Stretch the legs long, give them a little bit of a wiggle. We're coming to rest. Deep breath in. Shavasana. You might scan down from the head towards the toes, releasing the muscles of the body 
from the face, the neck and shoulders, the back, the hips, the pelvis, releasing the muscles of the thighs and the legs, the calves and the feet, the whole body becoming heavy and sinking downwards, finding rest. You might choose to stay here for a little while longer, or you might choose to come up slowly. So I hope you found that helpful. As triathletes, you have a lot of different movements going on in the body and a lot of active muscles. It's really helpful to work on a flow that helps to release those tighter areas like the front of the thighs and the hips and the shoulders so you can really optimise your performance but also your recovery time. I hope you enjoyed that. I'll see you soon. Thank you.